Hi, this is a video illustration for this example in section 3.5, Normal Force and Tension. So at the end of the chapter is this example of a guy on a scale in an elevator. It asks, what does the bathroom scale read in an elevator? And it describes the elevator accelerating. So what the scale reads, which is the normal force, is supposed to be a little bit different from the weight, which is what you are used to finding. So this is a complete example as far as the descriptions go, but it's uh, quite a bit mathematical. And if you don't have a good intuition for a situation like this, or you have good intuition, it's just not formulated in terms of how we state Newton's second law, if that describes you, then you are the student for whom this video is being made. So let me use this simulation to help illustrate the situation. For this simulation, the drawings are quite simpler. Um, instead of a person, I have a ball. <laughs> and instead of an elevator, I have this uh, box with a ball-shaped cavity. <laughs> um, this is for the um, limitations of what I can easily illustrate. Um, so one of these objects, the ball that represents a person, has an option turned on which will illustrate the force vectors on this um, object. So. Right now, there's a weight of mg on the ball, and um, you see that while it's resting on the bottom floor of the elevator, there's a normal force acting upward, which is counteracting or canceling or balancing this weight. And by the way, this falling uh, brief fraction of a second motion, that's a free fall. And ouch, and then, you know. <laughs> All right, so let me move the elevator by applying a force on the elevator. So as the elevator remains motionless, you will see that for the ball or the person in the elevator, um, it's the same as if it's just resting, resting on the ground. The normal force is in equal magnitude to the weight and it's pushing it up, counteracting weight. Now, let me adjust the situation a little bit to kind of reenact the scenario that the problem was describing. Let me zoom out a little bit so that I have a little bit of running room. And let me measure the force that I was applying before. So I was applying a force of about, I want to say, 170 Newton or so. All right, so I want to describe as closely as I can, the situation where the elevator is not really accelerating. It's uh, uh, moving at a constant velocity. So one way to do that is to apply a thrust that's just barely enough to keep the elevator in suspense or 170 newtons. Let me give it a little running start up here and you will see that it kind of floats a little bit, not quite, I guess 170 Newton wasn't quite enough. All right, so 170 Newton was just about enough to suspend this whole thing in air. So let me increase that drastically. Um, I think I can actually see it here, okay. So I'm going to apply 250 Newtons. That means um, there's going to be about 70 Newtons of extra force to push everything upward. All right, and let me slow down the simulation speed so that I have more time to talk. And as I run the simulation, watch. So as the elevator accelerates upward, see how the normal force is greater compared to the weight. So the magnitude of weight is from the center here to down here. And the magnitude of the normal force, it's from down here, the point where normal force is acting, to up here. So this normal force is now greater than weight. And that's because just as this elevator is accelerating upward, so does the ball need to accelerate upward, which means there has to be a net force on the ball. And it's the difference between the normal force and the weight that's giving you that net force. 
All right, that's exciting. Let me change the situation a little bit. So in this case, the thrust was greater than the overall weight, so that the whole thing accelerated upward. 170 Newton was uh, just about enough force to let it hang. Let me just to make sure that the velocity of this whole thing is zero. So with 170 Newtons, this just about barely hangs in the air. And while it's hanging in the air, watch that the normal force is about equal to weight. Now, I am going to reduce the thrust so that there is less than the amount of force needed to let it hang. Let's say 100 Newtons. So it'll be about 70 Newtons short of what it needs to stay in the air. So it'll accelerate downward. As it accelerates downward, watch how the normal force is less than the weight. Once again, the magnitude of weight is from the center of the circle to the tip here, and the normal force is now about half of that. And this normal force needs to be less because as you watch the whole situation, as the whole elevator accelerates downward, the ball is also accelerating downward. So that means there's a downward net force. And since the weight isn't changing, it's the normal force that needs to change so that there is a downward net force. All right, uh, let me do a couple of fun things. Let me uh, let it uh, rest on the ground first. I can do that by letting the simulation run with, um, um, with no thrust. Let me give it a little bit of initial upward velocity. I can do that by giving it a little bit of thrust. Um, I guess 250 seems to work well. Um, let the simulation run for a bit. I think I'm going to try doing it at regular speed. Um, so let the simulation run. All right, stop here. Let me zoom out for a bit. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to adjust the thrust mid-air. So watch. This entire group of objects have some upward velocity now. It is, um, well, mostly upward velocity. And let me change the thrust to the value that will barely maintain the approximately zero net force. Then watch. As this elevator continues to move upward, you see that the normal force hasn't really changed. Or let me flip that around. I think I can do this. With everything selected, instead of accelerating it normally, I can just give it a downward velocity. I think if I'm doing it to all of them, then it'll work fine. All right. And I'm leaving the thrust at the same amount, 170 newtons. That's what's needed to kind of maintain approximately zero acceleration. Then as this elevator moves downward, watch how the normal force also remains the same. This is an illustration of the principle that it's the acceleration you feel, not velocities. So with this elevator, what affects this normal force or the sensation of weight for the person in the elevator is the acceleration, or more precisely, the net force needed to produce the acceleration that the person should be undergoing, which is tied directly to the normal force. So that's all. I hope this is helpful. Until next time, bye.